Canon C70 vs Sony FX6. Undoubtedly two mid-level cinema cameras that are as close to perfect as we have seen in the filmmaking industry. Those cameras blur the lines between versatile one-man or woman bands and big sets with small crews. But as amazing as both of these cameras are, does one hold an advantage over the other? Is one better suited for one particular style of shooting than its counterpart? Let's find out. Let me start this video by saying how amazing both of these cameras are and what a time to be alive to be a filmmaker. And my grandma always used to say, wir wollen jetzt mal nicht euch tun. Which, even if you spoke German fluently, doesn't really make a lot of sense. But what she was trying to say, I believe, is we shouldn't really dwell on the little things. But as filmmakers and camera nerds, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to pin these two cameras together and we're going to find the little nuances that separate the two of them. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to my channel. Let's begin this video by comparing both camera bodies. The Sony holds more of a traditional cinema camera look with a little bit of a retro touch. When using this camera for the very first time, I was surprised at how light this camera actually is. I usually really don't like working with the original top handle of any kind of camera brand, but the one on the Sony FX6 I really did enjoy using. It's well made, it's not too plasticky and it does hold a lot of buttons, which makes handheld shooting a lot easier. Even more so with the side handle. It's quick and easy to adjust to your right shooting position and it also holds a lot of buttons that make shooting fast and easy. The one thing I really hated about the Sony FX6 body is its audio inputs. Because we absolutely have no way of recording audio when we're not using the top handle. Not even scratch audio and no microphone input either. And that makes shooting with this camera a little one-sided. It's way harder to put it on a gimbal and balance it out and it also kind of limits us when we want to rig the camera to our own needs and I really didn't like that at all. Another weird thing about that top handle is that you can't use any of your traditional microphones because they just won't fit and you need to either use a proprietary Sony microphone or you need to work with some kind of spacer. The Canon C70 is more of a hybrid camera between a traditional cinema camera and a really big DSLR, which is kind of weird and you need to kind of find the ergonomics for it, but it does help when shooting on a gimbal for example. That makes rigging out the camera a little bit harder. We don't have a detachable side grip for shoulder mounts and we also don't have a top handle which holds any buttons. But its weakness can also become its strength. With its small and compact body and the flip out LCD screen, we can use this camera in a very small compact footprint without having to attach anything to this camera at all. And speaking of the LCD screen, the build quality really isn't great and you might break the hinge on it, at least on the early iterations of the camera. I haven't done so on any of my cameras, but I've seen a lot of people online having that issue. If I'm going to include the audio limitations that we have when not using the original top handle, this point goes to the Canon in my opinion. If we exclude that, I overall like the ergonomics and the body and the design of the Sony a little bit better. Adjacent to the topic of the body, let's talk about the ports. Here the point clearly goes to the Sony in my opinion, because opposed to the Canon, it features an SDI port. And not only that, it features SDI as well as HDMI, whereas the Canon only has one HDMI port. The Sony has full-size XLR ports, whereas the Canon only has mini XLR, which for me hasn't been a problem, because you can easily use an adapter, but overall I think when it comes to ports, the point clearly goes to the Sony. Let's move on to the menu system. A lot of people hate on the Sony menus, and I do understand where they are coming from, from earlier Sony cameras, but the Sony FX6 is actually quite easy and intuitive to work with. I personally still prefer the Canon menus over the Sony's, but it's a really close run in my opinion. Especially when using the quick functions on the touchscreen on the Sony, it's a breeze to work with. There are some weird limitations on the Sony though. For example, we don't have false color, we don't have anamorphic degrees, and when wanting to use the internal peaking on an external monitor, you can for some reason. And those are all things that are possible on the Canon, so menu system, I think the point goes to the Canon. 
Let's move on to the internal ND filters and this is a really big topic for me because I love using internal ND filters and I hate screw on filters and all its limitations. So when picking a camera, this is actually a deciding factor for me. At a first glance, the Sony wins here with its variable ND filter, which is absolutely amazing. Not only can you fine tune all the adjustments, but you can also use an audio ND, which is very great for running gun and documentary work. There is one big downside though, and that is it's only seven stops. And for me personally and my work, that just doesn't cut it because I found myself in a lot of situations, maybe the Abu Dhabi desert or in Las Vegas, shooting in Mexico, where I need at least eight to 10 stops of ND. And seven stops is just not enough. So here I would have to either stop down the lens, which would influence my image, or I would have to use a screw on ND filter after all. And then where's the point of having internal ND filters? So here, in my personal opinion, the Canon wins just because I find myself constantly in situations where I need these extra stops. And this could be totally different for you. And overall, yes, the Sony VND is better, but I really do need those extra stops. Now let's talk about the big elephant in the room. The Sony is full frame, the Canon isn't. The Canon features a Super 35 sensor, but with the use of a speed booster made by Canon itself, you can actually make this pretty much a full frame camera. You are limited to EF mount lenses instead of RF, and I will talk about the mount a little later. And technically it also decreases your autofocus capabilities, which I personally have never been able to tell. And I've been using the Canon Speed Booster for the most part when shooting on a Canon C70. And I like the versatility that we do have the Super 35 sensor because now I can use my power focal cine lenses and make full use of the sensor. But the whole topic is complicated. It is a workaround to the speed booster to get the same field of view and be able to use your full frame lenses as well as the whole mount situation is kind of annoying. So this point obviously goes to the Sony because it's just full frame out of the gate and I would love for the Canon C70 to have a full frame sensor as well. So now let's talk a little bit about image quality. And yes, everybody says that Canon colors are so great and Sony colors suck and Yes, I do prefer the Canon image a little bit better than the one on the Sony and colors do play a role with this. However, I have shot way more on Canon and I'm used to the codex more, so this might just be my inexperience or personal preference. One thing that can be explained by inexperience or personal preference is the dynamic range though. And I have done tests myself comparing both cameras side by side and I've also read some lab tests online and it is confirmed that the Canon does have one stop of dynamic range more than the Sony. And dynamic range for me is so important and I love working with the Canon C70 and its rich image and all of its dynamic range. Not necessarily to say that when working with the Sony I could tell like, oh, my highlights are blown out and I can't really see the dynamic range because it's still featuring a great sensor with a great dynamic range. But overall, I still think that objectively, the point of image quality goes to the Canon. But that's not to say that the Sony doesn't produce any great images. Again, what a time to be alive and both cameras are absolutely amazing. And this really shouldn't be a deciding factor because both cameras in the right hands produce the most amazing images. And by the way, all the footage shown here in this video has been color graded with our custom LUT packs for Sony and for Canon. So if you're interested, check them out down in the description below. Now let's talk a little bit about codecs. And here in my opinion, the Canon absolutely crushes the Sony because we have way more codecs to choose from. We have raw recording internally and we have smaller file sizes too. I personally found myself in so many different situations where I need a different codec. We shoot long form content for clients, social media campaigns with over 200 videos. We also shot six week long documentaries where we gathered 10 terabytes of footage with the smallest codec that the Canon C70 has to offer. And sometimes you want to use the full capabilities of the RAW codec. So here we have way more options than the Sony does. The size of the smallest codec on the Sony is still twice the size as the lowest codec on the C70. So here, if you want to shoot a lot of content, but you don't want to destroy your hard drives, 
the Canon C70 is just the way to go. Let's briefly talk about slow motion. Both cameras have great slow motion capabilities. This Sony does feature 240 frames in 1080p, whereas the Canon C70 only features 180 frames, but you have to crop into the sensor. So going from a Super 35 to a Super 16, which will decrease your image quality further than when shooting 1080 on the Sony. So overall, both cameras are great for slow motion, but I would probably give the point to the Sony. Let's talk about the autofocus. Both cameras are absolutely amazing and industry leading when it comes to autofocus. The Canon C70 has a new firmware upgrade where we now have eye autofocus in all of our modes, even when shooting slow motion. And yes, some situations are a little bit challenging with the Canon C70 when it comes to autofocus, but it's still a great autofocus overall. The Sony FX6 also crushes the game in autofocus. And if I had to pick one of the two, I would probably give it to the Sony because it might have a slight edge in autofocus performance over the Canon C70. Another important topic for a lot of shooters out there is low light capabilities. And here obviously the Sony wins over the Canon because Sony has always crushing the game when it comes to low light filmmaking. The Canon can still hold its own and I never had any issues filming in low light, but needless to say, the Sony is better than the Canon. Nearing the end of our comparison, now let's talk about the lens mount. It used to be that Canon was absolutely far superior to any other camera brands just because of the sheer amount of lenses they offer. But that has changed over the last couple of years in my opinion. Sony has caught up and all third-party manufacturers also always create lenses for the Sony E-mount as well. Furthermore, with the switch to the RF mount, the whole system gets a lot more complicated now because a lot of third-party manufacturers don't really know what to do with the RF mount at this point. As of right now, there's only two cameras out there with a Super 35 sensor and an RF mount and even less cinema cameras with a full frame RF mount. So that makes it kind of hard for manufacturers to actually come out with RF lenses. There isn't that many pro RF lenses out yet by Canon itself and a lot of budget anamorphic manufacturers decided to not go for any kind of Canon mount at all. I really like Sigma Art lenses and their new line of prime lenses with video focus capabilities are absolutely amazing. They do produce them for Sony E-mount, but there is no Canon mount at all, no EF or RF. There's another really important thing to consider here though, and that is that Sony is the only brand featuring the Sony E-mount, whereas you can find an RF mount on the new RED cameras and an EF mount on other camera brands like Blackmagic and RED as well. So if you want to use other cameras or work with people that have different cameras other than your Sony camera, you're out of luck when it comes to using your lenses. Whereas with the Canon lenses, you can use them on different camera systems too. Speaking of working with other filmmakers, because this is also an interesting topic. In my entire career, I have only been hired once to DP for a project because I was a Canon shooter, but that was more of they already shot on Canon cameras and they wanted to match the image afterwards. But usually I think that Canon doesn't really get you in the door for DP work as much as Sony or of course RED does. I think there's just more people using Sony cinema cameras than there are using Canon cameras. I've seen a lot of people out there hiring people and asking them to shoot on either a Sony A7S III or a Sony FX6. People rarely if ever ask for Canon cameras. If you're a solo filmmaker and you only do your own work, that doesn't really have to mean anything to you, but if you want to be hired as a DP and you want to use your equipment and maybe rent it out on a job, then I think that Sony just gets you in the door way easier than Canon does. So let's summarize. Both cameras are absolutely amazing and you can't go wrong with either. If you find yourself shooting outdoors in bright daylight and you can make use of that extra dynamic range and you need those extra stops of ND filters, the Canon might be your choice. But if you're a low light shooter and you shoot indoors a lot and you also want to work with other filmmakers and you can use your Sony equipment more for this, then the Sony might be the right choice for you. Me personally, if somebody would walk in here right now and would steal all of my Canon equipment, the insurance would pay up and I had to decide, do I buy Canon all over again or would I start over with Sony? It's close. It's really close, but I would probably still go the Canon route. Just for these little things that I mentioned that I just personally true for me and my line of work, but it's close. It's really close. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this comparison between the Sony FX6 and the Canon C70 and I helped you make an informed decision of which camera to buy in 2023. And if I did, then please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for more and while you're already here, maybe go watch one or two of these videos because YouTube thinks you might like them. And I hope to see you on the next one.